This is one of the most important things ever, yet one of the most underrated. The Bible says, he who loves to sleep and the folding of hands, poverty will set upon you like a thief in the night. Hey, you cannot be sleep eight hours a day. You can't live in LA and wake up at eight o'clock in the morning. It's 11 o'clock on the East Coast. The stock market been open two hours. They already making decisions about your life and your ass was sleep. From the whole hustle culture promoting more work. If you want it, if you want this, it's work. Rich people don't sleep eight hours a day. That's a third of your life. To Netflix stating their biggest competitor is sleep. Netflix CEO Reed Hastings said the streaming giant's biggest competition is sleep. This comes at a severe cost and could lead to much worse consequences than it's ever thought. So you may have heard of that old maxim that you can sleep when you're dead. Well, I'm being quite serious now. It is mortally unwise advice. The shorter your sleep, the shorter your life. If you don't sleep long enough, you're fatter, sicker, weaker, stupider, and more lonely. Short sleep predicts all-cause mortality. Few people outside of biohacking junkies truly understand what it takes to get good sleep, which later leads to the possibility of earlier death. The shorter your sleep, the shorter your life. This video is an attempt to teach people the basics of sleep with the goal of minimizing sleep-related issues endangering people's lives. Currently, it seems like sleep loss is everywhere. Can you raise your hand if you feel like that you don't get enough sleep on a daily basis? And now look around you, right? So you can see that many of us are actually sleep deprived. It's very clear right now that there is a global sleep loss epidemic. From countless students getting severe lack of sleep to adults losing more sleep due to financial obligations, we are faced with likely one of the most detrimental epidemics for human beings. As many humans tend to look for quick fixes, this sleep loss leads many to the use of medication as a way of solving their issues without ever fixing the root cause of the problem. Eventually, this creates a vicious cycle that gets deeper and deeper the longer you stay. This is why it is crucial to understand basic sleep principles. For example, sleeping 8 hours do not equal to staying 8 hours in bed. With an 80% sleep quality, you would need 10 hours in bed, and few know this, which makes many chronically sleep deprived. Or viewing sunlight in the morning has a lot of importance. Honestly, I think the easiest thing is waking up. Get as much light as you can. That's easy. In the morning, when you wake up, you need light. Leading to my next point. Imagine a clock, but inside your brain. This clock is meant to make you feel tired at night and awake in the morning. That is done through either releasing cortisol for wakefulness and melatonin for sleepiness. My previous advice was to view morning sunlight, and the reason is because of its effectiveness. This is not some woo biology thing. This is grounded in the core of our physiology. There are literally hundreds, if not thousands, of quality peer-reviewed papers showing that light viewing early in the day is the most powerful stimulus for wakefulness throughout the day and it has a powerful positive impact on your ability to fall and stay asleep at night. This may explain the use of wake-up lights as a more natural way of waking up. Now, before moving on to any practice, it is necessary to take care of our environment. Whether it is external lights, sounds or temperature, environment is what needs to be taken care of first. External sounds need to be completely shut out. Roger Federer rented two houses for this tournament to put his family in the first one and himself in the second one to make sure his sleep environment was perfect. Lights on the other hand can still be present, but as neuroscientist Andrew Huberman said, The reason overhead lights are problematic is the same reason why sunlight is so great early in the day, which is that the cells, that is the neurons that can wake up the, your brain and body through activation of the circadian clock, reside mainly in the bottom half or two thirds of your neural retina. And the way the optics of your eyes work is that the cells on the bottom half of your eye view the upper visual field. So this is a beautiful adaptive mechanism that allows these cells to respond to overhead light from sunlight in the early part of the day and throughout the day. But in the evening, if you have bright artificial lights on and those bright artificial lights are overhead lights, it's going to more closely mimic what sunlight does in the evening time. And that turns out to be a bad thing if your goal is to eventually go to sleep. So again, do like the Scandinavians do, use lights that are set low in the room at night. It is also important to note that red lights are the lowest on the light spectrum, meaning they have the least wakeful effect on the body and could even promote the release of melatonin. Any lights that have a warmer tone to it will be more optimal for nighttime. When it comes to temperature, our body needs to lower it to about 18 degrees Celsius to fall asleep. Well, you want the brain and nervous system 
and the rest of the body needs to drop by about anywhere from two to three degrees in order to get into your deepest sleep and transition to sleep. Because this temperature oscillation is such that as your temperature is dropping, that correlates with the generally with the most sleepy phase of your circadian cycle. Warm showers or baths can help with this since your body tends to cool down after. Cooling down is an important part of the sleep process. Your body's core temperature needs to drop by about two degrees Fahrenheit when you go to sleep. And a warm bath can help with this process because when you step out, your body starts to rapidly cool down. Once these have been taken care of, it's time for real practices. Like just mentioned, warm baths or showers help to cool down the body to its ideal temperature. The body reacts by cooling down right after being exposed to a warm environment, just like it warms up after cold exposure. Since our body is still warm, stretching is next on the list. The benefits of relaxing your muscles by stretching are pretty straightforward, but loosening up at night may help with the brain's nighttime cleaning process. While you sleep, the brain floods itself with cerebrospinal fluid to clean up the metabolic junk that accumulates during the day. And then it dumps that into the lymphatic system and stretching may help with the drainage of that lymph. And to make sure our mind is fully calmed down, some meditation to top it all off can be very beneficial. In order, it will look something like this. Now in case this doesn't suffice, supplementation is possible. Neuroscientist Andrew Huberman has put together his own optimal cocktail for sleep. Is magnesium 3 and 8 and something called apigenin, which is basically a derivative of chamomile. Those two mm. things, they essentially shut down the forebrain thinking, anticipating part of your brain, allow you to drift off into sleep really well. Uh -huh. To this, it's possible to add glycine. Three grams of glycine was found to help insomniacs fall asleep faster, sleep more efficiently, and wake up feeling better. Four grams of glycine was found to help people mitigate some of the negative effects of sleep deprivation. Since taking it, I noticed that I wake up less during the middle of the night. Dark cherry juice. Tart cherry juice is another sleep aid because it contains the plant form of the sleep hormone melatonin. 30 to 60 milliliters is about what I take, but I only take it every now and then. And countless other supplements. But it is also important to note that supplementation is just that, supplemental, and cannot replace the basics of sleep science. Now, hype for new products is definitely not new and holds true for the sleeping world. Wanna know the secret to my happy marriage? This. Marketers like to inflate the importance of their products, and as sketchy as some of these products may seem, some of them actually help a lot. More inexpensive stuff like Wake Up Light, which helps you wake up more naturally by imitating the sunlight, or mobile sleep trackers designed to inform you about your sleep quality. Speaking of sleep trackers, more expensive ones going up to $300 include the Aura Ring, giving you insights about deep sleep, REM sleep, and sleep efficiency. Even more expensive products include sleeping mattresses going up to $2,000 designed to cool your body down at each necessary spot, leading to an optimal body temperature to fall asleep and stay asleep. But just like with supplements, these are additions to consider only after basics are covered. Now the excitement of starting to implement everything is probably in you right now. But before the end, it is important to note that obsessing over sleep isn't optimal either. Some nights will not go as planned and worrying about such details will in the end worsen sleep even more. The point is to not get caught in the anxiety of a non-optimal night and understand that this is normal and can happen. It isn't about getting perfect very fast, but slowly improving day by day, month by month and year by year.